So now that I have my APM 2.5, my Arducopter taken apart, I'm going to do a how-to video that shows you the process of been wanting to uh, design an enclosure for the APM. I want to go through the process of showing you uh, how you design you know, parts at scale and, and the process that I'm currently using. So uh, what I'll do is I'll take you through Rhinoceros 3D, or also known as Rhino 3D, and show you how we're going to uh, start with a top plate. You know, that will be the goal of this video. And then after that, we'll uh, work on building a full enclosure. And I'll make the files uh, available for the community. They'll be on garagepilots.com. So please check that out and sign up if you haven't already. And it uh, should be a fun experiment. And I hope it's useful. So we'll dive into the software and then ultimately end up uh, with a 3D printed part that will overlay on the APM board. So before we get started, I just want to show you the rhino3d.com site. I'm on a MacBook Pro, so uh, they actually have a beta version that you can download and, and use. So that's what I'm currently using. And while I realize you can actually go over to 3D Robotics and order this uh, top entry case for about five dollars. Um, while that would be the easy way out here, you know, part of what I'm doing is just trying to get familiar with the software as well as, you know, come up with some designs that are useful for the community. And it's always good to, you know, have something that you can uh, download, modify, and print kind of on demand. So this is the Rhino interface. And, you know, I'm not going to be able to go through every single detail. So if there's any questions or anything is unclear in this video, feel free to post a comment and I will uh, gladly uh, take a stab at answering it. So for starters, I actually have downloaded a uh, APM 2.5 dimension drawing. I got that from the 3D Robotics site. So we're going to import that and set it as a, a picture frame, which is basically a static image uh, that we can put in the background and then draw on top of. And let's go ahead and click Snap so we can get our cursor in the right place. And let me go ahead and line that up. And there we go, we have our dimension drawing. So I'm gonna expand, and you can kind of see the dimensions of the uh, board. For the next step, we wanna make sure that we you know, get everything to scale. So what I'll do is I'll actually create a reference rectangle uh, of the appropriate dimensions. 66.42 millimeters wide by uh, 40.64 millimeters tall. So let's start that rectangle. And as you notice, I have a quick command. Anything you use with a keyboard in Rhino 3D, it actually goes to a command search. So you, so you can just start typing and get your uh, command executed, which is a really cool feature. Okay, so we're going to make this 66.42, hit enter, by 40.64, we'll hit enter. And so now if I zoom out a little bit, you can see our rectangle. Now next up, we'll go ahead and size this uh, dimension drawing so that it is overlaid uh, exactly into that rectangle. Okay, now what we want to do is we have our, our outline that we created, our reference rectangle. And I'm going to go ahead and move, let me actually turn off this uh, orthogonal snapping. And we're gonna move this down to where the bottom left of our APM board is just perfectly aligned uh, with the rectangle that we created. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done that. Now next up, we will scale uh, our image to fit the size of the rectangle. So I'm gonna type scale, and we're gonna use a tool called OSnap, which really just makes it easier to uh, snap as we, as we draw and resize. So we'll start at the bottom left, this bottom left point, and then we'll draw across all the way to about the end of this uh, APM board. So if I click again, 
you'll see now that I can start to resize in a proportional manner. So you see we have a ways to go. So I'm going to go ahead and just bump that up and zoom in a little bit. Okay, so it looks like we're in good alignment. And once we're, you know, at a position we feel good about, let's just click again. And now we have everything lined up and scaled perfectly. Okay, now what we can do next is since we have this uh, image scaled to the dimensions that we want, we really aren't going to mess with it uh, much more. So I'm going to go ahead and select it and then let's move it to this background layer. And we'll know it's on the background layer if I hit this little light bulb. You can see I can toggle it on and off. But we want it to be on, so for the, in the meantime, I'm just going to lock it, which means we can't select anything. Now, we also have our reference rectangle that we created. And we actually don't need that anymore, because what we're going to do next is we're going to create uh, a rounded rectangle. You know, you can see these edges are rounded. So let me go ahead and delete that. And then I'll go back to the rectangle tool. You see I have an option to select rounded. So we'll go ahead and do that. What we're going to do next is we're going to start down at our bottom left corner. Just get it to a place where it's pretty close. And now we're going to scale our rectangle up. So we make sure our lines are overlaid on the drawing properly. So that looks pretty good. Now what's cool is now we go into a rounded corner mode. As I drag the mouse, I'm going to get that line right in the center of the background. And there you go. Now what, one other thing we can do to make this process a lot easier, you know, moving forward, I'm going to go ahead and move this outline to the traces layer. And we're over here. Let's go ahead. If you notice, if I select off of it, it's really hard to see that that outline. So let's go ahead and change our background or our layer color. So let's let's just do a real nice light green. And now anything that we do on this layer will be green and uh, visible as we begin to draw some of our other traces. One thing that I learned with a previous print, you know, as I was setting this up is that while our trace is, you know, right along the edges of this board, we actually want to extend those a little bit. You'll notice that the APM pin connections are right pretty close to the edge of the board. So we want a little bit of space um, between those connections and the edge just so that, you know, our print uh, has room and there's a little bit of stability in between. So what we'll do next is we'll actually, I'm going to use uh, the OSNAP tool, midpoint. You'll see what that does here in a second. So I'm going to start typing in scale. We're going to select our trace, hit enter. Now here's where the OSNAP comes in handy. So we have a midpoint up here and then a midpoint here. And if I come across, you'll see that it tells me where they in intersect perfectly in the middle. So I'll click and just drag a little bit and click again. And now you can see I can scale up. And I'm just going to do, that looks good right about there. So now we have a nice edge around uh, the trace edge around the uh, edge of our APM board. Okay, so next we're actually going to uh, draw our cutouts for the different pins and ports that we want those to, to ultimately poke through. This will be kind of a top plate. Um, the first, you know, in, in a series of tutorials I'll be putting together for this design. So the top plate will sit on top and allow these uh, ports and pins to uh, show through. So we'll start with just a simple rectangles that we're going to draw. And they don't have to be too exact. I mean, we're, we're working in millimeters here, so we have a little bit of a um, little bit of margin for error. There's the jumper. 
I'll have a little bit of overlap there and I'll explain what that does uh, here in a little bit. This port. Okay, we have all of our outlines in place and we can actually turn off the uh, background layer just to see you can, I don't know if you can see that green very well, let me, so that's kind of where we are. Let me go ahead and show you what I wanted to do earlier or what I was referencing earlier with this overlap. So we want to just have a nice, I think, you know, from from my initial run, these two to be just one big kind of outline instead of uh, two separate uh, holes here. So what we'll do is we'll use a command called uh, curve boolean. Go ahead and run that. Let me turn off the background so you can see what's going on. And so in doing that, we select our curves. And yes, these are called curves in Rhino, just so you don't think I'm crazy. <laughs> so we'll select that guy and this one. And we'll hit enter. Now what we want to do is we want to select the interior areas that we want to be part of this curve. And you'll see that outline, that black outline shows uh, what we're keeping. So we'll hit enter again. And now we have basically created our new curve, but left the originals. So we'll delete that and delete that. And now you can see our trace or outline that goes all the way around. Let's take a look at our progress. We'll minimize that top view and then we'll go over to our perspective view and we can kind of see, I'll um, zoom out and rotate around a little bit. And you can see, you know, sometimes it's just good to go into perspective view and see how everything looks. Okay, so next up, we're actually going to extrude our surface or our curve so we can give it some depth or dimension. So what I'll do is I'll run the extrude curve command. and I'll select our outline, hit enter, and let's just bring it up two millimeters. And as, I've, as you may have heard me mention in the past, I, when I'm 3D printing, I like to start with just a real, real thin print to make sure everything looks good and I'm not using too much plastic. So uh, two millimeters is sufficient. So there's our two millimeter extrusion and we look at the shaded view, you can see what we have so far. So next thing that we want to do is we actually want to, uh, let's go back to our wireframe view and let's make our holes, let's make our cutouts that we drew uh, in the previous step. We'll cut those out of the, uh, of the surface we just ex extruded. So the command we're going to want to use is called make hole and these, these may seem like, you know, they come easily to me, but believe me, I spent a lot of time just doing uh, research and trying to figure out how to pull this off. So I'm going to select that, hit enter, and it's going to ask for the surface that you want to make the hole in. So we're going to select our surface we just did, and you can kind of see it go there. And uh, just to have a perfect cut, we're going to do two, hit enter. And if you have a view, a shaded view, I'll go ahead and rotate it. Let me turn off the background. And there you go, you can see our cutout. Okay, let's go back to our wireframe view. And we'll do the same for our other curves. Make hole. Mm -hmm. 
and let's just take a look again and see how our shaded view looks. So far, so good. All our holes in our surface have been made. Now there may be a way to do that in a bulk fashion, but uh, as, as for now, the best that I know how to do is just do them individually. So we can take a look. Okay, before I export, let me just point out that uh, when you export it, it exports everything in your, in your 3D drawing file. So we don't want to export our uh, background image. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and since the background layer is locked, I'll select everything and we can do an export selected. Okay, so that's done. Let's take a look in MakerWare. And I'll add that to the build platform. And it's looking good. Let's just rotate around and make sure everything looks okay. And so that's our first cut. Now what I'm going to do is uh, get everything prepped and I'll send it over to the replicator too and we'll see how this thing turns out. Here we can see our the fruits of our labor start to come to life. This is our uh, STL file we just exported from Rhino 3D. The Replicator 2 is putting the finishing touches on our uh, APM plate that we just designed in Rhino 3D. And our part is coming down. Took 13 minutes to print, two millimeters thick. So I'll peel it off the platform and we'll go see how it looks uh, overlaid on our APM 2.5. So it looks pretty good if you remember our uh, design where we added these two little rectangles together. Now you'll notice right beneath at the bottom of this you know where we join those rectangles there's a little piece that's broken right there so uh, that tells me you know as we modify this design we'll probably just make this one big cut out and even not even have to deal with that that separator okay so let me go ahead and take this I'll clean this little piece off and it looks like we'll just lay it in right like that it's actually a pretty good fit for a you know initial cut. You can see our pin connectors pointing out. And let's see. Let me just do a test and see if we can get. Yeah. So those guys fit in there nicely. Now, you know, you'll notice right over here where we did the uh, cutout for these two ports right here. That little corner right there is kind of catching and not allowing it to sit flush or all the way down. It's a pretty simple tweak that we can make. Um, but everything, you know, for a first iteration, you know, doing a trace, as you saw, we brought that bitmap in and we... Uh, you know, set it in the background and then we traced around, but not bad. And what we'll do is actually continue to improve on this design. But that's just the overall process I've been using when I've been trying to take, you know, some, make some mods to kind of real, real world parts like the DJI arms and so forth. But um, I hope it was useful. I know this is kind of long and drawn out. There's a lot of information. But uh, it's just kind of what I've been experimenting with over the past few weeks. So if you have any questions or suggestions, comments, please let me know. And thanks for watching.